my story is pretty typical of someone that's been in the church. Like I grew up and have been going to church since I was a baby. And I'm still here now, but it's really what has kept me here that makes it feel like there's something unique or, or valuable to what I've gone through. And ultimately what's kept me in church is people. We moved to Utah, or we moved to Price when I turned five, and right away we started going to Awana, which is when I first met Randy and Lillian Gold. And so I've known the guy for 20 years. He and Lillian were like the first people outside of my family to really accept me in ways that I didn't expect and just fully let me embrace who I was. So he's had an impact on me in my whole life, him and Lillian. So I'm the, I'm the youngest of four boys, but because I was homeschooled, I didn't really have a lot of friends my own age growing up because I didn't have friends at school. You know, your brothers don't always make the best of friends. So most of my friends I found in Price Chapel, in youth group. So I started getting connected to the youth group back when Sean Bagley was the youth pastor. Uh, so I was excited to go, you know, it's like really competitive, fun environment where I just get to go have fun, play with other people. And that was a when I first really started making connections with Mike Metzger too. And I remember he opened up a Bible study at his house on Sundays. And it was just a good safe environment for me to go have discussions about God with other Christians and really articulate what I was thinking, what I was feeling. I can't remember exactly when it happened, but at some point, I think I was 15 or 16, I started helping as like a student leader in youth group. Jesse Kobe was youth pastor at that time. And uh, I was not in a good place spiritually. And I, I look back and always say, you know, my 16th year was the worst year of my life. I, I hated God, I hated myself, I hated everybody around me. But because I grew up in the church, I didn't know how to find life outside of it. And he recognized that, Jesse did. So he just straight up called me out on it. Like, basically, these are all the areas you're really hurting yourself and struggling in life and struggling with God and, and to connect to people. and you can move past this. And I just got really mad at him. It's like, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm doing just fine, leave me alone. And so I actually quit going to church and youth group for a little bit. It became really important for me later when I had enough space, enough distance, enough maturity to look back and say, wow, Jesse was right. I'm not in a good place right now. And my own self-hatred, my own self-loathing is the main cause of that. I remember one night, when we were in Oregon visiting some family, like I was just sitting in a room by myself and I I didn't want to be so despising towards myself anymore. So I, I just committed to reading the Bible every day, just a little bit. And I started in the book of John because that's always what I've heard you should read if you're really trying to understand the story of Jesus. And it really started helping me focus less on the evil that I thought I had and everything that was wrong with me and start focusing on God a little bit more. Still had a lot of growth ahead of me, but it started helping. Something else that helped a lot too was I started my first job at Wingers, and the verse, whatever you do, do as if do it as if you were doing it for God and not for man, really stuck in my head. So everything that my bosses asked me to do, clean the bathroom in this way, like put a lot of elbow grease in the mopping, wipe those tables, do the gross menial low jobs, like, you know what? I'm doing this for God. So I'm gonna do it for him, not for these bosses that I feel like are being annoying or unreasonable for whatever reason. So I worked there for three years and really finally started growing up. I started, I had started making my first real friendships, like on a deeper connection. At this point I was helping with youth group again, because obviously I started coming back to church. And Alex was the youth pastor at this point. And he did such a good job at slowly easing me into responsibilities. At, at allowing me to develop my own spiritual gifts with people, with a, a youth ministry, and with myself. Like, I did so much growing because of Alex in, in this instance, and it really hasn't stopped since then. And it was around that time that I, I decided to start pursuing writing. But I, I know that I just really decided I want to start telling stories to people. And so I started coming up with these characters and these ideas. God put the bug in my ear to write a story for youth group. And so I, I told Alex, like, for whatever reason, I feel like I should write a story for youth group. And 
he was totally on board with it. And so we turned it into a, an Advent series that we did called Kingdom Come. And it was the first real story I had written. It was some of the best response I'd ever seen to students at youth group. Like, they were really into it. Cut forward about a year later, and then got this interesting idea of kind of a retelling of Christmas Carol. Uh, this character who was going through a really hard time and, and at the end of his rope and just wasn't sure what he was doing, kind of being revisited by a lot of his past, a lot of his history. Because I wrote that story, I was suddenly forced to look back in my life and see how many people have poured into my life in, in small ways and grand ways and have really helped me stick with the church, to stick with God, to keep following Him. So, Randy and Lillian Gold, Mike Metzger, my parents. Uh, Cal Samuelson is a huge one. That was like the first person to treat me as a real friend. Cameron Shiner, Garrett Heck. Alex Grum is a very significant one too. And honestly, there, there's too many for me to remember in just one sitting, but my whole life has been so aggressively molded by God through these people, even the ones that weren't purposely following him, he has still made it very clear that his, he is shaping my life through the people around me.